Welcome to my channel friends, this is your host, Recap Master bringing you today an Indonesian comedy drama film called Too Handsome to Handle. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The movie opens with introduction to the Moss family. Each member of the family is considered to be very good looking. They are admired by many because of their beauty and that fact makes them a lot of money. The eldest son, Okis, is an social influencer. He has millions of followers because of his looks. He is considered a love guru who helps men impress their crushes. The father, Hawker used to be a heartbreaker who dated more than 1200 girls before meeting their mother. Meanwhile, the mother also has very unique masculine features which many consider handsome. Interestingly, she has a very obvious mustache. Lastly, the protagonist, Kyulin is the youngest son and the most attractive of them all. The family has gotten used to the extra attention they get because of their good looks. Except for Kyulin, who struggles to live normally because of his handsomeness. He often wishes he did not get that kind of attention so he could go out without being chased by a crowd of women every time. Girls go crazy, pass out, pull their hair, and often get nosebleeds on getting a look at his attractive face. As a result, he has never had genuine interaction with a girl. He has been homeschooled and avoids going out in public. Kyulin has no friends he can talk to other than his pet fish. He often plays cards with it and chats with it a lot. His family watches him through a camera worrying about him. They want him to have a normal teenager life and try their best to help him. His brother Okis, frequently shows him pictures of girls, trying to hook him up with someone. However, Kyulin says that his type of girls is someone who doesn't like him. He wants to be seen for his personality and interest, not his face. When nothing works to motivate Kyulin to go out, the family takes it a step further. They plan to fake financial problems and guilt him into going to a school. One night when Kyulin wakes up to drink water, his parents pretend to be worried about their finances. They dramatically declare that they will only eat boiled eggs for breakfast until they earn enough money for Kyulin's homeschooling. He feels awful to be causing his parents so much trouble. The next morning, he declares that he will be going to school for the upcoming semester. The family is overjoyed until he mentions that he will only go to an all-boys school. Although they would have preferred him going to a co-ed school, they are happy to take one step at a time. A few days later, it is Kyulin's first day at school. Okis drops him off on his bike but Kyulin doesn't take his helmet off. He plans to wear it the entire day to hide his face. However, the plan backfires when the helmet grabs more attention than he intended. Kyulin quietly sits down in the last seat but is called out by the class bully Sidi and his sidekicks. When the teacher enters the classroom, she too is surprised to see a guy with a helmet. She urges him to take it off immediately. Reluctantly, Kyulin slowly takes off his helmet in a dramatic way, revealing his face. In the following scene, the teacher is being loaded into an ambulance. It turns out that she had started to nosebleed and hyperventilate because of Kyulin's beauty. The other students complain to the principal that the new student is too handsome to handle. Kyulin runs through the hallway to go back home but is tripped by one of the bullies. They bring him to the school's storeroom and introduce themselves like they are Power Rangers. They are called the Tiga Tak, a group of three bullies led by Sidi, the principal's son. After the over-the-top introduction, they reveal that they need Kyulin's help to ask a girl out for prom. The group has been in the senior year of school for the past three years. They refuse to graduate until Sidi goes to the prom with the most beautiful girl of the BBM school, Amanda. However, she only accepts requests from handsome men so the group wants Kyulin to deliver the proposal. They assign an innocent guy, Kibo, to help Kyulin and lead the way. Kibo has also been a victim of their pranks in the past and is obliged to do what the bullies say. Afterward, Kyulin goes to the principal's office with Kibo to make an official complaint about bullying in school. Kibo knows what the outcome will be but he still accompanies Kyulin. The principal is troubled by his son refusing to graduate. Since Kyulin's beauty gives him a chance to take Amanda to the prom, the principal wants them to do whatever the bullies say. That evening, Kyulin and Kibo decide to complete the task the next day and get rid of the responsibility. Kibo treats Kyulin with genuine friendliness, unrelated to his beauty. Although the day didn't go as planned, he is happy to have gained a friend. The next morning, they go to the BBM school where the girls smell the presence of the boys. They are strict about not allowing ugly boys to enter the school premises. Hence, when they notice Kyulin wearing a helmet, the entire school asks him to take it off. In a climactic scene, Kyulin takes the helmet off and mayhem ensues among the girls. Only a few hours later, the news makes it to the television. Clips of girls crying, bleeding through their noses, getting possessed, and jumping around are being shared all around social media. Kyulin starts being known as the too handsome to handle guy. The hottest student of the BBM school and model named Amanda also hears the news and is instantly smitten by Kyulin. He is the first guy who matches in beauty and status with her. She immediately makes it her mission to impress him. When the news becomes huge, a crowd of girls gathers in front of the Moss residence. The family starts charging them money for a house tour. Kyulin, who is hiding in the streets, sees his family on the news. He feels betrayed and used by his own people. When they call him, 
he refuses to come home and is even sadder when the tourists mishandle and kill his pet fish. He is now hiding on the roof of a building from the maniacs who are chasing him through the streets. Suddenly, a girl appears behind him and asks if he plans to jump off the roof. Kyulin looks at her in surprise because she does not bleed from her nose or pass out upon seeing him. The girl refuses to speak and simply walks away. Kyulin is so nervous that he can barely speak. The encounter greatly improves his day. A while later, he contacts Kibo, who picks him up and invites him to his home. He and his grandmother invite Kyulin to stay as long as he wants. When Kibo walks into his room, he notices two rare collectible playing cards and is amazed. They realize they have several common interests, one of which is playing card collection. The next day, they go to the all-girls school to look for the girl from yesterday. While they're at it, they meet Amanda and give her the proposal files sent by CD. Amanda pretends to be unimpressed with Kyulin's beauty, but when he leaves, her nose bleeds profusely. Kyulin sees his crush on the stairs, but the other girls around him prevent him from approaching her. Kibo and Kyulin spend the next few days doing everything together and becoming best friends. One afternoon, Kibo takes Kyulin to futsal, where he frequently meets his crush, Rear. Following the match, Kyulin notices the girl on the roof working at a nearby shop. He couldn't help but stare at her. Just then, Kibo appears and introduces Rear to him. Kyulin discovers that she is also Kibo's crush, who he was talking about earlier. The two appear to be quite close, which makes Kyulin jealous. He has difficulty falling asleep that night. Then he remembers Okis is a love guru and schedules a meeting with him. When they meet the next morning, Okis breaks down in tears of joy. He had been waiting for the opportunity to advise his brother on girls. Kyulin has forgiven his family for selling him out to his fans because he would not have met Rear otherwise. The brothers then go grocery shopping while Okis lists all of the things Kyulin should do to impress his crush. As Kyulin follows Oki's suggestions, he realizes he doesn't know Rear as well as Kibo does. He still refuses to give up on his first love. Amanda visits the boys' school one afternoon and gives Kyulin an invitation to her birthday party. Along with that, she gives him a phone as a gift. Later that day, Kibo, Kyulin, and Rear attend karaoke. Eventually, Rear and Kyulin get to sing together. Kyulin is excited to duet with her, but Rear is only interested in Kibo. He soon realizes that she also likes Kibo. The revelation causes his heart to crumple with jealousy. So, when Kibo isn't around, he asks her directly if she has a crush on Kibo. Initially, Rear denies it, but when Kyulin lies about Kibo's love for Amanda, her face drops. Her expression confirms his suspicions. After returning home, Kyulin calls Amanda and requests a favor. She cheerfully agrees to do whatever he says. The following day, a crowd gathers at the venue to celebrate her birthday. When Kyulin and Kibo arrive, Amanda greets them. Strangely enough, she appears to be more interested in Kibo than Kyulin. She even pulls him aside to speak with him in private. At the same time, Rear arrives at the party and discovers Amanda kissing Kibo. She runs outside, heartbroken. Kyulin takes advantage of her vulnerability and admits his feelings for her. Rear thanks him, but claims she never saw him as more than a friend. Despite conspiring against his only best friend, Kyulin receives nothing in return. When the bullies see Amanda kissing Kibo, they become enraged and jealous. They beat Kibo up for it, while Kyulin stands nearby, too scared to intervene. Later, he brings Kibo home and helps his grandmother treat his wounds. Only after seeing him moan in agony does Kyulin realize he has made a grave mistake. The next day, Kibo gives him a legendary card from his collection, which Kyulin had been wanting for a long time. Kyulin, who is guilt-ridden, admits to all of his wrongdoings up to this point. Kibo is shocked and saddened by the betrayal. He claims that if he had known Kyulin also liked Rear, he would have left her. The words only make Kyulin's situation worse. At last, Kibo orders him to leave the house immediately. Knowing he is in the wrong, Kyulin simply walks away. He eventually returns home after a month. His family is overjoyed, however, Kyulin is not. He isolates himself in his room and avoids contact with others. But above all, he misses his best friend. They occasionally cross paths, but never exchange more than a fleeting glance. At home, Kyulin's mother is concerned about his health. She approaches him one night and hands him his pet fish, which never died. She also informs him that he can return to being homeschooled if that is his preference. His happiness is all that matters to his family, and they will go to any length to ensure it. Kyulin, moved by her words, realizes that he has people in his life who support his success. This motivates him to make things right with Kibo. The following morning, he rushes to Rear and tells her everything. Following that, he approaches Kibo and attempts to apologize. Kibo initially dismisses him, but when asked about Rear, he begins to express how much he loves her. Kyulin reveals that Rear was listening to him on the phone the entire time. That way, he mends their relationship and returns to being both of their friends. A few days later, they all go to prom together. 
Kibo's date is Rhea while Kyulin's date is Amanda. As expected, Kyulin and Amanda win the title of prom king and queen, Kyulin hears a girl comment that he is only mildly handsome and is instantly drawn to her, indicating the start of a new relationship. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and please leave a like to support the channel out.